Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today we have returning special guest Ray. And if you've been watching our recent videos, you know we've replaced the automatic transmission on Ray's 2007 FJ Cruiser. He immediately, after the transmission swap, took it on a trip to Utah and he recorded some transmission temp numbers that were a little bit high and I thought I'm gonna take this one step further and I'm gonna install a transmission cooler on his rig. I chose to go with a Hayden 699 transmission cooler. This was a recommendation from my buddy Anwar who has an FJ Cruiser and he's also used this same cooler on third gen 4Runners and other models of Toyota SUVs and trucks. He really likes it. It's got a lot of cooling capacity and it has a thermal bypass which means that it's not gonna be cooling the fluid optimally until it gets to a higher temperature. And the benefit of that is, is when you're in cooler temperatures, like you're maybe in the snow or something, the fluid is gonna bypass most of the cooling channel and just go right back and return to the transmission. So it's not gonna be really cooled so much with this external cooler, it's just gonna pass through. When it comes to them saying this has a thermal bypass, I don't think there's an actual valve in here. It's just a larger channel that the colder and thicker fluid will travel through. This area of the cooler, you can tell when you look at it, has a much larger channel than these smaller cooling channels. So the vertical lines are the smaller cooling channels that the fluid runs through. And then in between those cooling channels is the cooling fins. The air runs through the cooler, cools off the cooling fins, which ends up cooling off the fluid because the cooling fins are going to radiate the heat away from the fluid. So that's how it works. So like I said, I don't think this actually has a valve in here that opens up at a certain temperature. It's just that when the fluid is colder, it's thicker and it's going to take the path of least resistance and go through this wider channel right near the entry and and exit ports and not travel through the smaller cooling channels until the temperature gets up the fluid thins and then it starts running through all the cooling channels that run up and down. This Hayden 699 kit comes with some mounting hardware. They provide the zip ties so you can actually push the zip ties through the AC condenser, through the radiator, and affix it like that. That's a very common installation way to go with a aftermarket external cooler. I chose to buy an additional kit that Hayden sells, and it has these brackets and the hardware for it, and you can affix the transmission cooler to the front of the vehicle, and then you don't have to use the provided zip ties and a lot of people including myself do think this is a better way to go because if you don't get those zip ties really tight and the transmission cooler is able to move a little bit especially when you're four wheel and you're going on bumpy roads like washboard roads that can start to wear and mess up the cooling fins of the AC condenser and the radiator and then ultimately it can maybe damage the cooling channels on the radiator or the AC condenser and then mess up your AC system or mess up your radiator and potentially leave you stuck out there in BFE with the radiator that's leaking. So that's why I want to do the install for Ray with some brackets and we'll have to figure out how we're going to mount it to the front of his vehicle. The kit comes with four feet of transmission hose and I decided to buy a second four feet section just to make sure I'm gonna have enough because I've never done a transmission cooler install on FJ Cruiser so I don't know how much hose is really necessary so I just bought a little bit extra just in case. The final thing I bought is some heater hose and I bought this three quarter inch heater hose for abrasion protection because quite often where you run the lines it could be rubbing up against something metal and you don't want that because it will rub a hole in the line and then cause a leak and then get you stranded. So this three quarter inch will fit right over the 3 8 transmission cooler line and it will work really well for abrasion protection for anywhere the line is going to be resting up against metal or anything else. So that's all the parts we bought for this job. We're going to get started. The first thing we're going to do is remove the skid plates. I'm not going to show you how to remove skid plates. Removing skid plates is as basic as it gets. You usually have to remove them to get to the oil filter, to change your oil and other things. And so I'm not going to bother showing you that. It's a multitude of 12 millimeter bolts. You get the bolts out, you get the skid plates out of your way, and then we're going to get started with this job. We've got the two skid plates out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is remove this front grill. It's held on with a couple clips and a couple bolts. There's a clip on the driver's side in the center. There's two bolts 
And then there's a clip on the passenger side. That looks like it's it, according to Ray. He's taken this off before, so I'm gonna get the clips out first and then I'm gonna get the two bolts out. So these are like a pop-up style of clip from what I remember. You could get underneath there with a screwdriver or whatever. I'm just using this spudger tool and then it pops out. I'll get the other one. Okay, and those look like 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna zip those out with my Milwaukee gun. It's actually a, a screw. It goes into a plastic clip. And he's got some fancy lighting thing here, so we'll have to deal with that. He also had an air horn connection. We had to disconnect that. You probably won't have that. And then this thing should slide out. And there it is. That Hayden 699 cooler is pretty big. Trying to fit it in either on the driver's side or the passenger side in front of the AC condenser is problematic. We're gonna remove this locking mechanism for the hood. There's a plastic cover that goes in front of it and it has clips right here and clips that go in here. And this is what it pretty much looks like when it's attached to the locking mechanism. So you have to get in there with a screwdriver and push the little tabs in on all four clips and then you can get it out. Because we wanna separate this locking mechanism from this vertical cross member and then get to a bolt on this cross member that's behind the locking mechanism and then another bolt down here. We're gonna loosen that, be able to pull it forward so we can then sneak the cooler on the inside of this AC condenser line. This is a 10 millimeter and then there was two other 10 millimeter bolts we removed here. One here and one here. Now, this could just lay over here. The cable that it runs into the inside of your vehicle so you can release it, that's that cable there. Got this wire running through it, just move this out of the way. Okay, so now we have a lot more room to work to figure out where we're gonna mount this thing. We removed all this and we tried to fit in the cooler behind this bracket, but then decided we didn't like the way it was gonna work, either right behind here, over on the passenger side. So what we came up with is we're gonna mount it right in this area in front. And we got the grill in here and we saw how much room we have to work. And then once we saw how far back this thing could sit, we then started working on the brackets. So you can see the way we made the brackets. So this is the top left one, and it was pretty much a simple L bend that we did. And we're gonna bolt it up right to this vertical cross member, to this upper hole right here. It'll sit in just like that. This bracket was probably the hardest one to make because of all the little bends we had to make, but this one's gonna use an existing hole. It's an M6 with a 1.0 pitch, and it's gonna bolt right there. This upper right one was another fairly simple one to do. It was just like 90 degree bend, 90 degree bend, and then I took a grinder to this and I ground it down a little bit to where it will fit in better right here to this existing bolt hole. And that's another M6 bolt. And then the final one, the bottom right, again, it was a simple couple 90 degree bends, and we're gonna bolt it up to this little bracket right here to the upper bolt hole. That again is another M6 1.0 pitch bolt. In case you were wondering how we went about making the bends on the brackets for the transmission cooler install, let me go over that right now. Here's one of the bracket straps that you get with the kit. We would hold the bracket up to the transmission cooler and then to the body part we're gonna be bolting it to and we figure it out, okay, we need to make a bend, let's say right here. We would mark it with a Sharpie where we need that bend. And then we would come over to the bench vise and we would put it in the bench vise, line up the area where you need to bend it at the top of the bench vise and lock it in place. Here's where you wanna double and triple check to make sure you're bending it the right way because once you figure out where you need to bend it and you make your mark and then you bring it over to the bench vise, you start to think, wait a minute, which way do I bend it? Do I pull it? towards me or do I push it away from me? So maybe take it off the vise if you don't remember, bring it back to the vehicle and say, okay, yeah, I have to bend it down 
towards me. You can start the bend with your hand really easily because it's really malleable. It's not really strong. I'm not going to bend this right now because I'm going to use this for another install. I'm going to install the Hayden 699 cooler on my 98 Forerunner, so I don't want to bend this just yet. So you would start the bend and the bend isn't going to be sharp like you'd want it. Say if you wanted to make a 90 degree bend, you start it with your hand, but then what you do is you grab your ball peen hammer and you hammer it down and then you can get that nice sharp bend you're looking for if you're looking for a 90 degree bend, which is mostly what we did on this install. We did a multitude of 90 degree bends to make the connection of the trans cooler with the body of the FJ Cruiser. When it comes to the part where maybe you have to make a twist in one of the brackets to make a nice connection with the body, I suggest you get onto the bracket with a couple channel locks like this, and then you can twist them in opposing directions to get that little twist you need. We had to do that on that bottom left connection to that vertical bracket in front of the AC condenser. We had to put a little bit of a twist in the bracket in order for it to make a nice connection. So this was a down and dirty quick explanation of how we got the bends in the brackets in order to properly affix the trans cooler to the body of the FJ Cruiser. So this one, I'm just gonna put this existing bolt back in. These bolts are plenty long to be able to add the width of this little bracket. This one up here, I just had a M8 bolt in my kit and I'm just gonna bolt it to this cross member with a lock washer. Wait a minute, why is this one not lining up too well? It was supposed to go on the back side, that's why. We put this one on on the wrong side. I have to put it on the back side for it to line up better. We have the cooler fixed with the brackets we made. It hooks up to this cross member at the top left corner. We use an M8 bolt with a lock washer and a regular nut. All the bolts, nuts, and washers used to attach the brackets to the actual cooler came with the bracket kit. We used a M6 bolt with a 1.0 pitch to attach the bottom left bracket to the vertical cross member. That was an existing bolt hole not being used. On this upper right hand corner, we shared this bolt hole with this piece right here. The bottom right one is sharing this bolt hole for this bracket that affixes right in front of the AC condenser. So we've now got it solidly attached at all four corners. Now we have to work on running the fluid lines from the existing hard lines up through here. And we're most likely going to use this hole in the body. We're going to choose to run the hoses through the body to the cooler through this hole that the AC line shares. And then these lines on the driver's side are the connections to the transmission cooler that is inside the radiator. And for this application, we're gonna bypass this cooler and we're just gonna go straight to the external cooler and we're not gonna use this anymore. We're gonna join the bottom and upper nipples with a section of hose and just cap them off. We're not gonna use them anymore. We're underneath the driver's side of the vehicle, right? underneath the radiator. You can see the sway bar right here. And then you can see the two lines right here. This line right here is the send line. This is the line that's sending the hot transmission fluid to the cooler and then it's running through the transmission cooler and then it's returning on this line closer to the outside of the driver's side. They use constant tension clamps so I just have to compress them, move them up the hose a little bit, and then I'm probably gonna have to use a pick tool to loosen them up, and then I'm gonna slide them off the nipple, and then let them drain a little bit into a drain container. Okay, I think those will slide off, hopefully. Uh, it's not gonna be that easy, is it? Okay, we're gonna have to work at this for a little bit. I'm using one of my favorite tools to remove hoses, my spark plug wire pullers. They could get enough of a grip where we could twist it and get it off. That's making a mess. See if I could get this other one now. Now that I have the rubber hoses disconnected from the metal hard lines underneath the radiator, I'm gonna disconnect them from the transmission cooler. This is the upper one. Again, a constant tension clamp. See if I could work that off. There we go. Okay, there's one hose, and I think one of these hoses I'm going to actually use to join the two nipples on the existing cooler. They'll work out great. Bottom one, I'm going to have to get in there. 
We're now gonna connect up the aftermarket transmission cooler hose to the hard lines that we just disconnected. This is 3 8 inch inner diameter automatic transmission line. It's a little bit smaller than the stock lines. It's too bad that you can't get the exact diameter that will be able to slip onto these hard line nipples easier, but it is what it is. So what I suggest you do is get a Q-tip or something else and dip your Q-tip in some ATF and get the inside diameter of the hose wet with ATF and then slip your clamp on. You're going to want to lubricate the nipple a little bit too to make it nice and slippery and then you're going to have to try to slide it on there and it might be a tight fit. That's what she said. It ends up the hose that comes with the Hayden kit is 5 16 rather than 3 8 and the 5 16 end is great for the fitting on the actual cooler but to hook up the 5 16 hose to the metal hard lines on the FGA Cruiser not so good so I had to make a run to an auto parts store and get some 3 8 line so the hose that comes with the kit is pretty much useless for an application for a, a Toyota because you need 3 8 5 16 is just too damn tight to slip over the metal hard lines on the vehicle so the way we have it set up is we have the fluid coming in from the bottom and exiting the top. And I read this on a B&M website that they suggest in a sideways mounting for a transmission cooler, you want to fill from the bottom and exit from the top because the worry is that there might be some trapped air in there. And because air rises, the air will be pushed out from a setup where it fills from the bottom and exits out the top. I'll show you underneath the rig which line is the send line and which line is the return line let's go underneath the vehicle this line closer to the fan is the send line sends the hot fluid and then the one to the left of it closer to the outside of the driver's side of the vehicle that's the return line so to give you a final look of how we got it set up we put a little bit of abrasion protection here a piece of that three quarter inch heater hose we ran sections of heater hose through the body to protect the hose for both the send line and the return line they have heater hose wrapped around them you can get a good shot of it right there what i did here is i joined the two nipples for the stock transmission cooler on the side of the radiator and what i used is one of the transmission cooler hoses i just cut it to size so it basically just makes a nice loop from the top fitting to the bottom fitting. Some guys just put like a vacuum cap or some type of cap on it, but I would rather have a hose with a clamp attaching these two nipples because right now there's no real worry unless the transmission cooler inside cracks. And if that thing does crack, then that's gonna be a pathway for coolant to come out of either the bottom or the top port. You don't want that. You want to cap those off just to prevent that. So if the transmission cooler ever does crack inside the radiator, you're not going to be able to lose coolant out of those ports. So that's why you join them. This thing is mounted really securely. We think we did a pretty good job with this. We're going to get this in my garage on level ground and we're going to go through the fluid check procedure. We already showed that in the transmission replacement we did on Ray's FJ Cruiser. So if you click on the link above, you can go to the end of that video. I'll put a timestamp in the video description to where you can quickly go to that spot in the video. And then in a very detailed explanation, we go through that whole process. So I don't want to go through it again because it takes a lot to explain it. So go to that video and you'll know how to get your level topped off. We didn't lose that much fluid. We only lost a tiny little bit, but this cooler has some level of capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pump in probably a half a quart through the fill port, and then I'm gonna open up the overflow plug when the temperature of the transmission is at that 97 to 115 range, and then we'll get it down to a trickle and we'll close it off. We've got the grill back in place and we have to affix it with the two clips and the two bolts or the two screws. With these, you pull the plunger out a little bit, you push it in and then you pop the little plunger back in. Then we just gotta cinch up these screws. Remember, these are going in the plastic so don't go crazy tight with them because you'll strip them. Because Ray has so many obstructions, he's got these big lights, he's got this cool Toyota thing that lights up, he's got the winch, 
He's got an aftermarket bumper, so in a perfect world, there wouldn't be so many obstructions like this light is right in the path of the air flowing through. This cool light up Toyota light is in the way of air going through. It's not optimal because you want as much air to get to that cooler as possible to get maximum cooling. We're gonna have to see how it goes because we've now eliminated the cooler in the radiator and we have a standalone external cooler. And I'm hoping because of the size, it's gonna do a good job. Even though it has some restrictions in airflow, it's still gonna do quite well with keeping this transmission cool, especially on like long steady grades or in really high temps, like you're going through the desert and you're climbing a steep grade, like maybe in Arizona or Nevada and you have ambient temps at 115, hopefully this cooler is gonna do the trick and keep raised transmission temps. Somewhere around that sweet spot, about 170 to 180, that's a good temp for transmission fluid. So now we're gonna get this thing into the garage, a flat ground, and we're gonna check the fluid level. All right, we're all done with this job. I can't say it's exactly easy, but it's not hard. The main fight is figuring out how to bend the brackets to where you can mount it where you want. And we showed you one example of how you can do it. There's lots of choices. You can mount it on the passenger side or somewhere in the middle. You can use the zip ties. You can do it a lot of different ways. I like using the brackets so you don't have to worry about if you didn't have the zip ties tight enough and on a bumpy fire road or something, they start to damage the cooling fins a lot and then maybe they spring a leak in your AC condenser or your radiator, which would be a bad thing. For the fluid top off, what I did is I added approximately about a half a quart, got Ray into my garage, which is fairly level. The range in which you wanna check it is between 97 degrees and 115. So we went to somewhere in the middle at about 106, 107. You unscrew the five millimeter overflow plug, and then hopefully if you add it enough, you're gonna see fluid pouring out of the overflow. It gets down to a trickle and then you close it off. If you need more detail on that, reference that video, part two of the FJ Cruiser automatic transmission swap, and you'll be able to see in great detail all the little specifics about getting the fluid level correct. Time is gonna tell if this was a good mod or a sick mod, so Ray's gonna need to test this thing out. He's gonna need to go out on some hills and he's gonna have to report back to me, hey, the trans temps look good, or no, they don't look good. The benefit that I forgot to mention about bypassing the stock cooler and the radiator is there is a known problem that sometimes the transmission cooler inside the radiator can crack. What ends up happening is the engine coolant mixes with the automatic transmission fluid. That contaminated mix gets back to the transmission and it ruins the transmission because automatic transmissions do not like water or coolant. They only like automatic transmission fluid, so you can end up destroying it. Is that occurrence of having the trans cooler fail inside the radiator super common? No, I don't believe it is. And when people go on Toyota forums and they see that it happened to somebody, they all of a sudden they freak out and think, oh my God, I gotta do it too because it's a common problem. It's not as common as you think, but the reason why I did it for Ray is because Ray just spent a whole lot of money on a remanufactured transmission from Toyota we spent a whole weekend installing that thing, so why not just wipe out any chance of getting what they call the pink milkshake when you get the trans cooler failing inside the radiator. They call it a pink milkshake because when the coolant and the ATF mix, it makes this frothy pink colored mess. And so I just wanted to take that completely out of the equation so Ray's never gonna have to worry about a trans cooler fail inside the radiator because I now eliminated that from occurring because we bypassed the trans cooler inside the radiator. After Ray drives this for a while and reports back with some data, I will put that either in the video description or a pinned comment. So check out both those areas to see what the report is after Ray got some time driving this thing to see what the trans temps are doing. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toy Out of Time with Timmy the Toll Man and Sean and special guest Ray and our very helpful helper, Ton. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick external trans cooler installs. Happy wrenching. Bye-bye.